Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the new tax credit for used Teslas, new Highland Model 3 leaks, Rivian versus Tesla, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, the Tesla Model Y has become the best-selling electric vehicle in Germany for the first half of 2023. That's despite local automakers in Germany ramping up their own EV production. That's even with Tesla's numbers being lower than usual as well, due to focusing on exports rather than domestic sales at the beginning of each quarter. 2,067 Model Ys were sold there in July, getting beat out by the ID.4 and ID.5, which are calculated together, and the Fiat 500e. For the whole year so far though, Tesla is still ahead in the EV space. From January to July this year, Tesla has sold 29,892 Model Ys, putting it in first place place. Taking second place is the Volkswagen ID.4 and ID.5 with 22,405 units. Even with two different models to offer, Volkswagen still wasn't able to beat the Model Y. Then in third place is the Volkswagen ID.3 with 13,647 units sold. And in fourth place is the Fiat 500e with 11,159 sales. And fifth was the Audi Q4 e-tron with 9,737 units. Tesla's success doesn't seem to have been reported by the local media, which is focusing on their own Volkswagen, selling more EVs overall than Tesla this last month. That of course is likely due to them offering a wider variety of models and being a German company. That may not be enough to keep the Tesla Model Y from becoming the best-selling EV in Germany in 2023 though. As end of quarter results come in, I would only expect Tesla's numbers to get even better. Next up today, as we are heading into the anticipated release, or at least start of production for the Project Highland Model 3, we have seen a couple of small leaks. Currently, the latest rumors say Tesla will start production on August 14th, and that it will bring the changes we've heard about throughout the exterior and interior. Now we have a small look at what the updated door could look like. Comparing to the current Model 3 door, it appears Tesla is adding a lot more fabric to the design, adding a small additional speaker, keeping the handle relatively the same, expanding the door pocket, and adding an ambient LED light strip at the very top of the fabric there. Another small leak is of the updated dashboard. Here's a comparison photo of the new one versus the old one. They're quite similar, but Tesla is definitely integrating it a bit more here, and they could be adding more dash to integrate the screen a bit more, similar to the current Model S and X. The Model 3 and Y kind of can feel a little bit like there's a dashboard, and then there's an iPad mounted to it. It also adds a new material to the front of the dash that hasn't been there in the past. These are small out of context leaks, and they really will only make sense once the full picture of the Highland Model 3 comes together. Hopefully we see this car very soon. Next up today, according to a future fund analyst, Tesla could overtake both Ford and GM in revenue by 2027. Unlike Ford and GM though, Tesla is not just an automaker. They also profit off of their other businesses, like their various energy solutions and supercharger network. For that reason, Tesla shouldn't be valued just as a car company, but a technology company. As pointed out by the analyst Gary Black, the Tesla 2024 consensus forecasts are notably low and do not correspond to the real state of affairs. He sees Tesla's revenue being greater than Ford and GM's by 2027. Wall Street predicts Tesla to increase revenue by 24% per year in that time, while Ford and GM are expected to grow by 2% and 4% per year. Black, however, is considering all of the factors that could increase that percentage, like the Highland Model 3, Cybertruck, FSD Alpha version 12, and US EV tax incentives. After all of those factors, he predicts Tesla's 2024 sales growth to be as high as 53%, which is almost twice of what Wall Street guesses. He also thinks earnings per share will be much higher too. While we might look at these numbers and think that Tesla is doing a whole lot better than all of these legacy automakers, it's actually not quite a fair comparison. As we move into the era of electric vehicles and away from the era of combustion engines, car manufacturers are going to start looking more like tech companies. That's because more EVs today are run by powerful computers, and it's in a company's best interest to design their own to reduce costs in the long term. Tesla has seen the importance of that for a long time and vertically integrated across the board. Next up today, Tesla has announced that their long-term CFO, Zachary Kirkhorn, will be leaving the company, and his position has already been filled by their current chief accounting officer. In his time in the position, he maintained the general approval of Tesla investors, but now Tesla is saying, quote, as of August 4th, 2023, Tesla Inc. appointed Vaibhav Taneja as chief financial officer in addition to his current role as chief accounting officer to succeed Zachary Kirkhorn. Mr. Kirkhorn stepped down as of August 4th after a 13-year 
seven-year tenure with the company, the last four years of which he was serving as Master of Coin and Chief Financial Officer. They go on to say that during Kirkhorn's tenure, Tesla has seen tremendous expansion and growth. Tesla thanks Mr. Kirkhorn for his significant contributions. Mr. Kirkhorn will continue to serve Tesla through the end of the year to support a seamless transition. They didn't offer any reasons as to why Kirkhorn is leaving, but the fact that he's staying until the end of the year hopefully means this is a natural move and not anything negative. Elon commented about this on Twitter, essentially saying that it's a tough job and it makes sense for someone to take some time off. Best of luck to him and hopefully this will be a seamless transition like they said. Next up today, the Tesla Model 3 is now eligible for a $4,000 tax credit for used models. This is great news for those in the market for the most affordable Tesla option yet. The IRS has had a list on their website for a while now of vehicles that qualified that didn't include the Model 3 or Chevy Bolt. Those were very disappointing considering that there are so many of those cars available in the used market. Now the IRS has updated their website. The link now redirects to fueleconomy.gov, which includes way more models in their list. Audi, Bentley, BMW, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Chrysler, Fiat, Ford, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, Mini, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Polestar, Porsche, Smart USA, Subaru, Tesla, Toyota, Volkswagen, and Volvo are all now represented in the list. It's great to see so many clean options in the used market, giving even more opportunity for people to make the switch. Of course, that includes a lot of fuel cell hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles, but there are also a lot of fully electric options. Tesla also acknowledged this on their website. They say, for all used electric vehicle deliveries, eligible customers may receive a tax credit of up to $4,000 or up to 30% of the purchase price, whichever value is less. Eligible customers must meet all federal requirements. Those limitations include an annual gross income limit of $150,000 for married couples filing jointly, $112,500 for heads of household, and $75,000 for all other filers. The price of the car, though, is also capped at $25,000, excluding taxes and fees at the time of delivery. Lastly, the car has to be a 2021 model year or older. Presumably, every year that age requirement will increase by a year to match, so next year you can get a 2022 model year that qualifies if you can find it under that price. Funny enough, right under that thorough explanation, they have two buttons to order the Model 3 and Model Y new, which qualify for a different tax credit under entirely different requirements. This is great to hear and hopefully brings the price down for used Teslas enough that people are able to afford them, but finding a Tesla under $25,000 is still pretty impossible right now. If you could find one, this tax credit is available, which is great to see, but it may be a while till we see one under $25,000 used. Next up today, a new tent may be popping up soon outside of Tesla's Fremont factory. They submitted a new permit filing to the city recently seeking to gain approval to install a new tent valued at $750,000, but they'll need to build it, run electrical, and get mechanical permits. The filing is titled Installation of Permanent Tent at Road, Light Tunnel Structure, Electrical and Controls. We've seen a similar structure before when the Tesla Model 3 entered production back in 2018. That tent has since been made permanent with General Assembly 4 and 4.5 being used to build the Model 3 and Model Y. They also built this one for storage. This factory has been overcrowded for some time now, so hopefully this new tent provides some relief on that cramped space. When Tesla took over that factory, it was producing around 300,000 units a year and is now producing much more than that. Partly that's due to increased efficiency, but that can only go so far. The filing doesn't include square footage or even what it'll be used for, so there's no telling if this will be replacing functions that are happening inside or supplementing them. It's also a possibility that this is going to be used for extra storage, which could also help things run more smoothly. Whatever it's used for, its purpose is likely to help increase production at that factory even further, as has been the goal for all of Tesla's factories for a number of years now. I'm also wondering if this has anything to do with the new Project Highland Model 3, but but for now, the assumption is that that car will just be built on the same Model 3 lines Tesla has used for years. Next up today, Tesla has taken a step to make their virtual power plant program bigger than ever. They've partnered with Energy Hub, a provider of distributed energy management systems to build the largest virtual power plant in the Northeast. Tesla's virtual power plants are networks of houses connected to the power grid, collecting solar energy from their roofs. Their excess clean energy can then be sold back to the community. This is especially helpful in the event of a blackout and during times when the grid is under greater pressure, such as during the summer when everyone's AC units are running more more than usual. Their VPPs in California and Australia have been wildly successful, and they're already announcing new ones in Texas and Puerto Rico. 
Now Tesla is launching a new VPP in the Northeast with the help of Energy Hub. They said, quote, Tesla Inc. and Energy Hub, the industry's most experienced provider of distributed energy management systems, DERMS, have collaborated to enable connected solutions program enrollment via the Tesla app. The new in-app experience makes joining utility programs frictionless for electricity customers in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island who enroll in connected solutions, Energy Hub's largest bring-your-own battery demand response program. The program links batteries to create a virtual power plant that can be used to curb peak demand for electricity and to provide additional grid services. So basically, customers with Tesla Powerwalls will be able to join Energy Hub's Connected Solution VPP program right from the Tesla app. That does assume that they meet the eligibility criteria. As for the criteria, Tesla Powerwall owners with or without solar are eligible to participate in Connected Solutions if they receive electric services from National Grid's Massachusetts territories, Rhode Island Energy's Rhode Island territories, Eversource's Massachusetts and Connecticut territories, or Cape Light Compact's Massachusetts territory. You also have to have a residential service account. If you're in the right area and have a Tesla Powerwall system, now could be the opportunity to help your community transition to cleaner energy while making some money back. Owners can reportedly make up to $1,500 per year based on how much the company ends up sourcing from your home. Quote, Tesla Powerwall owners who participate in the Connected Solutions program can earn for every kilowatt of benefit they provide to the grid, up to $1,500 per year depending on the size of the battery in the state where they live. Using the in-app experience, customers can easily enroll in the program and see the entire event, including how much energy they are providing, and understand how that results in earnings from their utility. It's very exciting to see more virtual power plants opening up because it's creating an opportunity for homeowners to help shift their local grids to be more sustainable. It doesn't end there though. If businesses and large buildings are able to join this program too, whole communities could be powered entirely by sustainable energy much earlier than the government could implement large scale projects like this. As solar energy becomes more widespread, there will be more opportunity for these connected grids. In the first half of this year, over half of new US generating capacity came from renewable sources for the first time. According to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, 17,017 megawatts of new generating capacity was placed in service through June 30th of 2023. Solar and wind are included, and as solar gets much more popular, we will hopefully see some more affordable options there, so every owner of a sunny rooftop can take advantage. Next up today, three years after Tesla claimed Rivian stole trade secrets from them, the two companies are actually going to court. Tesla filed a lawsuit against Rivian back in 2020, accusing them of stealing trade secrets via hiring their ex-employees. Rivian reportedly encouraged them to bring documents that they had accumulated at Tesla. Rivian has denied this though. The employees in question were two recruiters, an EHS manager and a manager of Tesla's charging networks, and the documents supposedly consisted of highly sensitive trade secrets, confidential and proprietary engineering information. Then in October of 2021, Tesla made a more specific claim that Rivian was stealing the core technology for its next generation batteries. Now three years after being initiated, a judge has ruled the case will move forward. According to Bloomberg, a state court judge on Wednesday tentatively denied the employee's request for a summary adjudication ruling, which would have dismissed Tesla's claims that they had signed agreements and other contracts that forbade them from stealing proprietary information and disclosing it to competitors. The judge granted the employee's request for a ruling on another claim by Tesla that the workers illegally accessed the company's computers to copy and steal data. What makes this complicated though is that Tesla has since partnered with Rivian to help them adopt Tesla's NACS charging connector in their vehicles. It's unclear if that partnership will interfere with this trial, but we'll have to wait and see. I wouldn't expect to hear much more about what those trade secrets are specifically, but we're going to be hearing a lot more about this case now that it's actually going to trial. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Over at Rivian, they seem to be making progress toward the toughest thing, profitability. After strong Q2 earnings, Rivian is raising their delivery guidance for the year, and they say they've improved gross margins by 50%. Rivian beat expectations for Q2, delivering 12,640 EVs, up 50% from Q1. That beat analyst predictions by around 1,600 vehicles. Production is particularly picking up after Rivian retooled their lines for their own enduro drive units and LFP battery packs. These in-house components have helped reduce input costs by 25%. 
For revenue, Rivian generated $1.12 billion, and overall margins on cars increased drastically. They said, quote, we remain confident in our ability to continue to drive our cost per vehicle lower by ramping production and leveraging our fixed costs, as well as our commercial engineering design changes and operational cost reduction efforts. What's interesting here is that while the R1T launched first, the R1S actually made up 70% of their production in Q2 as they worked to catch up on back orders. They still did post a net loss, but they are definitely on the right track. Rivian CEO RJ Scarange said, our second quarter results reflect our continued focus on cost efficiency as we accelerate the drive towards profitability. On a quarter over quarter basis, delivered vehicles grew around 60% while gross profit per vehicle improved by about $35,000. We have achieved meaningful reductions in both R1 and EDV vehicle unit cost across the key components, including material costs, overhead, and logistics. It was a strong quarter and we remained focused on ramping production, driving cost efficiencies, developing future technologies, and enhancing the customer experience. I think Rivian makes a great product and some of the things that they've already changed are definitely putting them on the right track. I'm definitely excited to see what the future holds for them. Lucid, on the other hand, has taken a page out of Tesla's book and began slashing their vehicle prices, announcing on social media that they would be cutting as much as $12,400 on select models. As part of their Peer Summer event, the 2023 Lucid Air Peer all-wheel drive and available touring and grand touring models are reduced until August 31st. Unlike Tesla, it sounds like these prices will go back up after that deadline. The Air Peer all-wheel drive is discounted by $5,000, now starting at $82,400, then both the Touring and Grand Touring are discounted by $12,400, now starting at $95,000 and $125,600 respectively. Lucid's deliveries have been falling for the last two quarters, so that might have something to do with this promotion. The Tesla Model S, the Air's main competitor in this space, now starts at $88,490 and $108,490 for the Plaid, but hopefully Lucid's efforts result in some much-needed sales this quarter. At the same time, they've unveiled the specs for the new Lucid Air Sapphire. Built to rival the Plaid Model S, it'll have 1,234 horsepower and a 0 to 60 in 1.89 seconds, beating the Plaid by a tenth of a second. On top of that, it appears to be shipping with a top speed of 205 miles per hour. That's something you can only achieve in the Plaid with an expensive upgrade, but the Sapphire is shipping with carbon ceramic brakes and loads of other features. It'll also have a more efficient 427 mile EPA range. The big difference here, though, is that it'll cost more than twice as much as a Plaid starting at $249,000. If having the fastest production vehicle on the road is important for customers, they may be willing to pay that price, but this seems like it's going to ship to a very limited number of people. Lucid recently teased this trim rolling off the assembly line in Arizona and said it would be available soon. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see when we're expecting the Project Highland Model 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.